Hey, this is Chuck Marshall with Metawani, and I'm talking to Tomas from At The Gates. Tomas, how are you? Very good. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. So the new album, To Drink From The Night Itself, is coming out on May 18th on Century Media. Uh, this is another concept album inspired by the, uh, the book, The Aesthetics of Resistance by Peter Weiss. I was really intrigued by, by this, and I started to actually read the first volume, which is the only one in English. Uh, it is a really tough read. Uh, what drew you, <laughs> what drew you to this uh, epic novel? Well, I mean, first time I read it was probably like fifteen years ago, so I, it's been uh, in the in the back of my head for quite some while. To you know, I wanted to work with with the, with it in some way, especially like the emotional impact it had on me, you know, and try to portray that uh, musically and lyrically uh, in a death metal setting, of course. Uh -huh. um, but then you know it, it always felt like it was too big, too, too big of a challenge. Right. But then after the last At the Gates record, you know, which was also pretty heavy conceptual, when we started working on this one, I felt maybe you know there's nowhere to hide anymore. Maybe I should just just attack this 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 bastard once and for all. <laughs> but I kind of worked in, in a different way. You know, it's kind of like it, as I said, it's more heavy on the emotional side and and like trying to portray the those kind of um, that kind of essence of the book you know uh, there's a lot of theoretical stuff in there as well but you know I, of course the, vo the 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 full book the full three volumes is like over a thousand pages yeah and the final album only has 10 songs so this you know you have to live with yourself a little bit right <laughs> so uh, so you and I uh, Giannis were the primary writers for the new album you handling the lyrics uh, Giannis doing the composing for the music. Uh, was he also? Did he also read this novel? And was he, uh, but you know, with you as far as conceptually developing the music to go with the lyrics? Well, I can't, no, he didn't read it, but I, I kind of uh, gave him a really good uh, explanation of it, like you know, sending links to articles, stuff like that, you know, and uh -huh. broke it down to him and, and explained what I wanted to get across with it, and also what kind of emotions, you know, I was. Uh, you know, working on like um, lyrically, because uh, I always see a song as a as a picture or a painting, you know. And I really wanted to get across what I was feeling here. And I mean, his songs were all all the time responding a lot to what I was writing as well. So we fed of each other there, really. Uh, you know, uh, when you were writing the um, an album like this that spawned from another piece of work. Um, do you hope that fans will be inspired to seek out the source material that inspired you? Uh, it's it's not like, of course, that would be super nice. I mean, it's it's a great novel, and I, I would say uh, it's that would be amazing. But it's also what he tried to do with the novel. I'm trying to do with the uh, the album in a way. Uh -huh. You know, like it's more like a a beacon against uh, apathy and. Uh, you know, uh, uh, populism, uh, which is very, you know, of course, in your country as well, and, and here over here, very uh, closely connected, like the widespread apathy where people don't seek out their cultural history, the uh, art, and, and and or even you know, try to figure out the world around them, yeah. you know, to to know their place in it. People are just content to be where they are, and you know, be in this pink little uh, YouTube bubble or something. <laughs> like that. And and that, that's that's the space where this right wing populism can grow freely, and that's uh, pretty worrying, you know. So that's we're trying to put up a beacon against that, you know, like wake up, and you know, at the gates has always been about, you know, it, what we do has to be important for us, right. And therefore, we think that that kind of urgency, almost desperation in the music and lyrics, comes across to the listener. So when you're sitting there on the on the commuter train or whatever in the morning, listening to the record, you're gonna be like a little bit like, shit, you know, <laughs> there is stuff out there that means something. I'm gonna do something that means something too, you know, and and like whatever it is, like read some, you know. Uh, a really good novel, right. uh, you know, listen to, to a little bit more challenging music, uh, explore some culture, or, or go out, like, to, to uh, 
do some research on, on situations in the world in you know how that affects you you know a lot of that stuff you know like you know take you know take take the world back a little bit you know right yeah and I, I was kind of you know thinking that conversely um, do you ever hope that when you're uh, when you're writing music and you're and you're actually trying to you know challenge the listener a bit um, do you hope that that like spurs their creativity to to build off of what you've started hopefully i mean and, and as i as i talked about on the last record our art is never really fully created until the listener interprets it you know that's mm -hmm. when when the art is created we create like like a platform to experience art upon in a way and it's only fully you know created when it reaches uh you know a listener a recipient of of the same uh you know that's when when the thing happens so hopefully that feeling could of course generate a more on, like honest uh, artistic um development in our listeners too you know yeah cool uh, so, To Drink From The Night Itself is the first At The Gates album uh, without Anders. Um, did you guys feel a void at all when you were in the recording studio without him? No, I mean, the thing is, I mean, Anders is a very close friend. I mean, I've known him since I was 16. Yeah. It's uh, one of my closest friends, and of course, it's Jonas' twin brother and everything. So, uh, I mean, it's, it would be rude to say, you know, we, we don't miss him. Yeah, of course we do, you know. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, more as a friend, you know, the actual process of writing the record and everything, you know, Anders said after the last show in August 2016, I think it was, yeah. on that on the reality tour, he said, like, he needed a break after that and, you know, to, to figure out if he had another record in him and, you know, how he felt about being in a touring band because we all knew that he suffered on the tours, you know, he didn't, he didn't like touring. Mm -hmm. um, and we gave him that that time, you know, because you know, as I said, his his well being matters to us as as a close friend, you know. Right. So, but during that hiatus, we were really like building up this energy to start creating again. Everybody were fired up, and we we, we waited for Anders. Right. So in a weird way, it was actually like almost a relief when Anders said he was not, you know, he was not coming back because at least. We had a decision, maybe not a decision we wanted. Right. It was a decision that we could work with, and then we could start writing. So it was like that. That was the creative spark, which I know it sounds like yeah. a paradox thing <laughs> that, or like, well, one of the main members leaves. That's the the creative spark, but it actually was because uh, we actually we at least had a situation we were in control of. But as like for six months, we were just waiting. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, I know that uh, Jonas uh, Stahlhammer has, has known you guys for quite some time. Um, was it easy to incorporate him into the recording once you guys started? Yeah, yeah that was no problem. I mean, that, that's like we had some uh, s some boxes for the new guitar player to tick, basically. You know, yeah. And when when we we noticed how much those boxes narrowed the selection down, <laughs> it, it was kind of scary. You know, it's like all these things that we needed from a new guitar player and there was actually almost only one guy who, who was <laughs> left you know after that and so we we knew that he was going to work out you know like socially uh the musical reference points and everything and he has a brilliant style of playing that's different from anders but you know that's also nice you know yeah to have some kind of uh, development in that case not try, having someone that tries to imitate anders in his style no, it's a perfect fit, and I mean, of course, he officially joined a little bit too late to be a, a big part of the writing process for the record. But I know that he's already got some stuff lined up, and I mean, he will, as much as anyone else in the band, be a creative force on the next record. Awesome, that's great. So uh, you guys are uh, actually coming to the states the, this weekend for the Decibel uh, Metal and Beer Show. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I, I love craft beer and I love metal music, so this is so cool. I just wish I could be there because uh, I'm a huge fan of you guys as well. Um, what styles of beer do you guys like the most? Well, I, I guess we're all different in the band as uh, some somehow. You know, I mean, um, I'm a huge fan of uh, real Belgian ales, you know, but I have a 
connection from with Belgium. My yeah. my fiance lives in Belgium, so we uh, <laughs> I, I in, indulge when I'm over there. You know, awesome. So awesome. all those classic Belgian ales uh, are you know that's my favorite. Uh, also, I, I like some um, barley wines, some some of the more uh, hoppy IPAs. You know. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that, but I mean, uh, we're all different in the band. Some guys are more into the stouts, and some are, you know, pure lager drinkers. But I think we all, in general, uh, prefer quality, you know, yeah. in, over quantity. And the, it, yeah, it's it's we have great discussions uh, about <laughs> it. I think three of us are on, on Untapped. So <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay, cool. That's cool. Awesome. It's quite fun to 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 be a little bit nerdy, you know. I, I, <laughs> It comes with age, I think, you know, the nerdiness. <laughs> you know, I, I actually think that uh, a lot of uh, metal heads are actually closet nerds as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, metal heads are nerds. Now we can <laughs> maybe be, be a hipster instead, you know, because <laughs> hipster is the cool nerd, you know, I yeah. guess. <laughs> uh, have, you, have you guys got into any of the American IPAs, the heavy hop stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'm, right now, it's um, I really like the... the Everything from uh, the Great Divide, uh -huh. super nice, uh, and Evil Twin is from the states, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. those are probably like together with Three Floyds, of course, who brew oh, right. yeah. yeah, years back. Probably my favorite three breweries. But I mean, I'm a like, like kind of a nerd. Like I, I like getting into this. Uh, different kind of beers and stuff. But I mean, I also know that I know too little. You know, like there's always people that could. That right. knows more and can educate me. They'll be like, "Oh, those breweries, <laughs> this one, you know." And then, you know, yeah, I'll be blown away. So, <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, uh, you've got that show coming up. You're doing some shows in Europe. Um, do you got any plans to do like a more extensive tour of uh, North America? Definitely, we are working on those plans right now, actually, and it's going to uh, be some news about that very soon. I hope you know it's coming together really nice. Uh, I mean, we're looking to probably come over there at least twice on 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 a longer run. So, yeah, America has always been super nice to us, and you know, we can't, we can't wait to be to be back there. Excellent. Any uh, any up and coming bands you are hoping to bring out and on the road with you guys? Oh, well, that's actually what is actually being discussed right now. So I can't really go <laughs> <coughs> through some different options there, and we are still working on it a little bit. But that's actually the details. That are being, you know, the the routing is pretty set, but it's just like the last it, the details. And of course, if I break it out now, then you know we might spoil it. <laughs> yeah, they'll say no. We don't want to. We don't want to tour that the gates. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> uh, hey, I I just had a uh, uh, couple more questions, and one was uh, kind of back to the the Peter Weiss book. Uh, there was a quote that his wife had um, that was related to. Uh, what his what was his creative um, process or what drove his creativity and she mentioned that you know basically quoted and said that there was a uh, there's a black chasm which all of us carry within ourselves uh, just as there are black holes in space in the macrocosm so in man is the in the microcosm in order to overcome the black hole this emptiness we must constantly conquer it was yeah. that any inspiration for the song "The Chasm" that's on the new album? Actually, I hadn't haven't heard exactly that quote before, so so that was actually cool that she mentioned, you know, the same word as we have. No, that that was actually not. But I mean, it, the song is about that feeling, you know. The uh, he also talked about fighting the abyss, which is kind of what she's saying too. Yeah, and yeah. I always thought that was a great title too. But like fighting sounds a little bit too like heavy metal to yeah. me. <laughs> and we all already had at war. You know, we couldn't have at war with the abyss. We couldn't have that. So, um, so uh, yeah, I, I changed that song to the chasm instead. But it, it, it describes what I, exactly what she's talking about. Even if I haven't hadn't heard that quote before, that's actually quite cool in a way. You know, but it's it's, it's exactly that, and it's also. A little bit what to drink from the night itself stands for as well like the creative uh, you know the struggle you know and also like how it is to like live live and breathe art and how important is it is for us you know uh, yeah. as, as a tool of you know staying alive almost you know right, right. Uh, to drink from the night itself is of course like a metaphor for 
creating dark art, you know, like, you know, with, with, with some heavy um, feelings involved in it, you know, like you, you, you um, channel the night through you uh, and then channel it onto uh, the listener, you know. Yeah. So I just have one more question for you, Tomas. Um, what's your favorite breakfast food? Breakfast food? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's kind of scary because I've been a vegan now for three years. All right. And my, my favorite breakfast food has always been uh, huevos rancheros, which is, of course, not vegan. So right. Not. <laughs> a flexitarian. Sorry, a flexitarian. I'm I'm vegan most of the time too, but I eat eggs sometimes. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I'm almost thinking about it when I go to the states, but <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I've done like vegan versions of it over here, but it's never really the same without the egg, you know. Right. So that that and, and a really good Bloody Mary that that would be like the per perfect breakfast food, I guess, <laughs> if, if you're on tour. Right. But uh, I, I will have to find like some vegan alternative to that. Awesome. But any kind of like Mexican breakfast material, you know, breakfast burrito and stuff, that's, I love that. Awesome. Oh, cool. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. I really appreciate it, man. No worries, man. It was, it was a great talk. All right. Take care and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys in the States. Yeah, it will be super. super, super pretty soon we will have some news about it. Cool. Awesome. Thanks again. Thank you very much, man. Yeah. Bye. Bye.